Excuse me. Yes, sir. Is this the Hagenmeyer Clinic? That's correct. I thought I was in a garden center. Oh, the plans. They were my idea. A little greenery to evoke the spirit of nature. How may I help you? Has Marquet been visited by a man in a clown costume? Oh, no. You haven't seen a man in disguise? Well, there's Theodore the Bear. He comes every Thursday to entertain the children. Personally, I think he scares them half to death in that crummy old bear suit. If I was stuck on my back with tubes in every orifice, he's the last person I'd want to see. Has Marquet had a visit from a pair of gangsters? I should hope not. Can you describe them? A thin guy who looks like a weasel and his friend, the gorilla. Sounds as if they escaped from a zoo. I'm here to see Jacques Marquet. Oh, yes. Are you related to our client, sir? No, I'm conducting a private investigation. Then I can't help you. Look at this ID pass. So you're Merlin. Marquet has been asking for you. For me? Yes. He was shouting your name when they brought him in here. Now, let me see. He was on Ward B-12, as I recall. Oh, he's being transferred to... Oh dear, he's on Ward J-2. That's... Nurse Grendel's ward. What's so bad about Nurse Grendel? She runs that ward like a South American prison. Keeping a well-disciplined ward isn't a crime, is it? Well-disciplined? In the discipline and punishment stakes, she'd whip the butt off the Marquis de Sade. Everything, I mean everything, is done to a strict routine. Six o'clock, alarm call. Six ten, bowel movements, and woe betide anyone who doesn't have a result. Those patients of hers are like Pavlova's dogs. She sounds like a real nightmare. And then some. If Nurse Grendel is that bad, how come the authorities tolerate her? She's like part of the furniture. Oh, you mean she's been here a long time? No. I mean there's not a man in this clinic who hasn't sprawled out on her. I was beginning to get the picture. This woman was jealous. With a big green capital J. How do I find Nurse Grendel's ward? Down the corridor on the left, turn right at the senior consultant's washroom. Right again at the executive coffee lounge. Bear left past the administrator's sauna. And turn left at the end. That's J2. And good luck. Thanks for your help, ma'am. You're welcome. As I turned the corner, I saw the source of the hellish noise which echoed through the corridors. It was an industrial polishing machine with an odd-looking guy in tow. Hello. What's that? I said, hello. Oh, hi. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. That's what I thought you said. Don't look so down in the mouth. No matter how bad things seem, I never let life get on top of me. Oh, yeah? What's your secret? Why, it's easy. All you have to do is smile and whistle this little tune. You know what? If you start whistling, I'll bust you in the teeth. It's a deal. Do you know a nurse called Grendel? Sure I do. Is she on duty today? Yeah. End of the corridor, Ward J2. Have you seen any unsavory characters lurking about in the quarters? No, sir, I haven't. But I've got nothing to worry about. What's that, Mr. Shiny? You'd take good care of the rascals, I'll bet you would. With a friend like him, I've no fear of oppressors. It must be a great comfort. He is. Would Mr. Shiny be your polishing machine by any chance? Please! 
Don't call him that. He's more of a friend than a machine. I've had Mr. Shiny for three years and he's never let me down once. How come you got so attached to a polishing machine? I asked you not to call him that. He's got a name, you know. Uh, yeah, Mr. Shiny. It's just that... You think it's odd, don't you? No, I, uh... I don't mind. The rest of the staff think I'm twisted. I heard them snorking behind me back when I gave Mr. Shiny his weekly pull through. Whatever you've got with this metal muff foot is probably a fine and noble thing. It is. Say, it's not every day I meet someone as crazy as me. Do you know where I'd find a patient called Marquet? No, I'm not allowed on the wards with Mr. Shiny. See you later. Yeah, take care now. machine coughed, spluttered, and died. Mr. Shiny, what's wrong, pal? Dr. Stobart at your service. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Aha! Just the man. You must be the new boy. Uh, yeah, I must be. Well, uh, stop wandering about and make yourself useful. Donny, come here, boy. This is Benoit, my nephew. Can I trust you to look after him? Do your own babysitting, Gramps. Who do you think you are, anyhow? I am Felix Hagenmeyer. And may I say what an honor it is to meet you in person, sir. You are on my medical wall of fame. Right up there with Pasteur and Leary. I look on it as a privilege, no, an honor to look after your nephew, sir. He is fresh out of medical school. It will open his eyes to see a real doctor on the job. I'll bet. Show him around. Let him see some real suffering. So long, Hagenmeyer. Good afternoon, Doctor. Oh, hi. Is this Ward J2? Yes, sir. The patient's are ready for your inspection, Doctor. Uh, thank you, nurse. Well, who's first? Monsieur Croquet in bed two. What's his problem? He's been complaining of loss of consciousness. You'll need this, Doctor. She gave me a long, narrow metal box and a stunning smile. 
Thanks. Hi, I'm Dr. Stobart. <laughs> Hello, Doctor. The nurse told me you keep losing consciousness. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I've had the problem as long as I can remember. It's a real out-of-body experience. <laughs> like death, but not so conclusive. I see. How long does it last? Just a fraction of a second, <laughs> and then I recover. I might not have been a doctor, but I was formulating a diagnosis all the same. This guy was nuts. I know exactly what you mean. It's known in the medical field as blinking. Is it serious? Of course it isn't serious. It's perfectly natural. B but just think, two seconds every minute? Why, <laughs> that's almost half an hour every day. Two weeks out of every year spent in total darkness. I don't have time to listen to this baloney. Which bed is Marquet in? <laughs> He's round the corner, in solitary. What's the matter with him? I don't know, but the men who brought him in were wearing masks and rubber gloves. Hey, you're a doctor. <laughs> how come you don't know? We doctors don't know everything. Then how come you act like you do? Has Marquet had any visitors? Nah, <laughs> neither have I. That's the worst thing about being in hospital. You feel like the rest of the world has abandoned you. Well, you know how it is. Life goes on. Thanks for those comforting words. Well, goodbye and good luck. Thanks, Doc. Hey, Benoit! There's no need to shout. What do you want? Do you know anything about a patient named Marquet? And no, sir, I don't know much about any of the patients. I've never met a doctor who admits that he's only human. Uh, I'm only a trainee, sir. I'm sure I'll get the hang of things. Do you know the nurse on Ward J2? No, monsieur. This is my first day here. I can't wait to get my hands dirty. I was talking about treating my first patient, of course. I didn't mean to get my hands dirty with the nurse. Shut up, Benoit. Okay, sir. Here, take this pressure gauge. Thank you, sir. What do you want me to do with it? Well, keep it safe until I... Think of something. Follow me, Benoit. I'm right behind you, sir. Doctor! What is it? You haven't taken my blood pressure. I can't take a satisfactory reading while you're excited like this. I'll come back later. Hey, Benoit! Yes, sir? Are you ready with that pressure gauge? Primed and ready to pump, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Use it on Eric Sopmarsh. Okay. Rather you than me, pal. Marquet? Yes. I am Marquet. I've been expecting you. You have? Well, what are you waiting for? Get it over with. 
I just want to know what I should do with the gem. The Lachmal gem? Yeah, right here in my pocket. Oh, oh, I thought you were one of the <laughs> Not me. I never inhaled. So, you will sit in my place? Uh, yeah. You, you could hardly make the trip to Ireland in your condition. What should I do with the gem? Deliver it to the Grand Master. Quickly, tell him that I have found the tripod. <laughs> In Paris. Wait, you have it? Not yet. But it's being taken care of. I. I own a couple of stooges with a flair for petty crime. Would that be Flap and Guido by any chance? You know them? We've met. What about the Hashashin? Have followed Klausner. He'll stop at nothing to prevent the reforging of the soul. And that's bad, is it? As for Klausner, uh, he has gone off to Syria on a wild goose chase. They have geese in Syria? That's enough excitement for one day, Monsieur Marquet. What are you doing here? Talking to this patient, of course. Monsieur Marquet is my patient. If Herr Hagenmeier was to hear that... Okay, I'm going. I'd learned all I could from Marquet anyhow. Oh, there you are, sir. I was just coming to look for you. I finished with your pressure gauge. Thanks, Bunny. What's that noise? It sounds as if someone's having a cardiac arrest. It's all right. The doctor's in there with him. Are you sure he was a doctor? Oui, monsieur. He showed me his ID. It was Dr. Braille. There's no Dr. Braille working here. He's an imposter. The door's locked. Help me, officer. Stand back, monsieur. I found Jacques Marquet. Did he talk? Yeah, he talked. For the very last time. He's dead? Yeah. Killed in cold blood by a bogus doctor. That's despicable. What kind of guy would pass himself off as a doctor and take advantage of a dying man? Was it Khan? No. I don't know who he was, but it certainly wasn't Khan. He got away, out the window. Have you ever heard of the Hashi Ashin? No. Marquet said that they were his biggest enemy. His biggest enemy was the bogus doctor. Don't remind me. That guy was evil. He had wild, staring eyes like a dead fish. I'll never trust a doctor again. Do you think the assassin was responsible for killing Marquet? I don't think so. He could have finished him off the first time. Besides, Marquet would have recognized him. He was pumped to the gills with sedatives. He wouldn't have recognized the four horsemen of the apocalypse unless they'd introduced themselves. I guess I'd better go back and talk to that weirdo. Which one? Rosso or Sergeant Mou? Oh, were you referring to Andre? I'll let you work it out.
Very late, monsieur. Late for what? Anything? I am closing the museum soon. You wouldn't like to get locked in. I can tell you, not in this gallery. Why not? It is haunted, monsieur. You don't believe in ghosts, surely? Oh, yes, I do. Seven years ago, a lad managed to hide in here. He'd made a bet with his friends, I suppose. When I found him in the morning, he was cold as ice and stiff as a bud. Well, what was the cause of that? They said it was a brain tumor. But on his face was a look of stark, desperate terror such as I have never seen before. Scary. Can you give me any further information about the tripod? Certainly, monsieur. It's infamous. That tripod, that belonged to John D. What's the importance of John Dee's tripod? Dee was the most famous escapologist of the 16th century. The Odini of his time. Don't you mean alchemist? Escapologists use ropes, chains, and handcuffs, not tripods. Well, whatever he was, that is the tripod he used in his experiments. What kind of experiments did John Dee perform with his tripod? Oh, the usual. Didn't you study chemistry at school? Yeah, but we skipped over thaumatology. Can I take a closer look at the tripod? What? Get it out of the case? Ah, uh, no! That tripod is protected by a sophisticated surveillance system. How sophisticated? A painfully loud alarm bell. How is the alarm bell triggered? By the slightest pressure on or movement of any part of the case wherein that tripod is situated. It strikes me that to call your alarm system sophisticated is, well, stretching the truth a little. It has never failed yet. The sophistication is in its simplicity. The sign on the tripod says it was found at a Templar preceptory. It does? Yeah. It doesn't mention John D. at all. Most remiss. You don't know anything about the tripod, do you? No, I don't. I never had much of a start in life, you see. I owe a little education again to my uncle. He was an optician, but he also doubled as the village school teacher. He taught me the alphabet. Wait. Well, Nineteen letters of it. The bottom row of the chart was uh, too small even for him to read, so he left them out. Why don't you start over and enroll for adult education? You know, I never thought of that. Do you think, if I studied art and did all my homework, I could be a professor of history? At your age? Dream on. Thanks for your help. I beg your pardon, are you André Lobino? That's me? You want my autograph? No, I was told you may be able to help me. Help? My name is George Stobart. I'd like your professional opinion. Well, okay, shoot. Have you ever heard of the Hashashin? Why, yes, it was a radical Muslim sect whose name became synonymous with murder. It was formed in 11th century Persia, shortly before the Crusades. At roughly the same time as the Templars. Yes, they gave a new word to our language, Assassini, the Assassins. How did the Assassins get their name? From the legend surrounding the secrets of their initiation rites. A young man who sought to join the sect was given hashish until he drifted into dreams. He awoke to find himself in a fabulous garden with everything he could wish for. The freshest water, the most delicious food, the choicest hash, and the most delectable women imaginable. Cool. Do you have the address? I haven't finished the story. 
There was a price to pay for this taste of paradise. Wouldn't you just know it? The young man would wake the next day to find himself back in the real world. He was told that he'd been given a glimpse of the heaven reserved for holy martyrs. A heaven he would enjoy for eternity if he was willing to join the Hashashin. How did the assassins operate? Well, as I explained, the new recruits would be only too willing to die for the cause. They'd be instructed in the use of the dagger, poisons, and disguise. Then, the Grand Master of the sect would name an enemy of Allah. And they'd stop at nothing to eliminate that enemy. You got it. They were fearless and deadly. Does the cult of the assassin still exist? Take a look around at the world today. You tell me. Does the name Montfaucon mean anything to you? Sure, it was the most grisly spectacle in Paris until the Revolution. A public toilet? Montfaucon was the place of execution for many thousands. A dark temple of death with row upon row of arches, each one framing a grim exhibit. Scores of rotting corpses swung on creaking rope, while the crows devoured their flesh. That explains the image of the hanged man. I found a reference to Montfaucon in Ireland, in a village called Lochmarn. Lochmarn? That's where Pegram was digging. That's right. He'd left the excavation before I arrived. Do you know Pegram well? Not really. I met him at a conference. I would have liked to talk to him in depth, but I didn't have time. When was this? Oh, uh, back in the summer. Uh, July, I think. The second week of July? Maybe. Yes, it was. Uh, just before Bastille Day. So Pegram was in Paris at the same time as the other victims. Pardon? Victims of what? Uh, nothing. Uh, just thinking aloud. Where was the site of Montfaucon? To the northeast, near the Canal Saint-Martin, but there's nothing there now. The old gibbet was torn down during the Revolution. I'd like your opinion on a medieval manuscript. Vraiment? Do you have it with you? No, it's too fragile. And besides, there are certain people who'd stop at nothing to get their hands on it. Intriguing. Uh, do you have a copy of the text? There isn't much. Only a few Latin phrases. I was kind of hoping you'd help decipher the pictures. Without seeing the manuscript, uh, that's a tall order. Just tell me one thing. What does the image of two men riding on the same horse suggest to you? The Knights Templar. Does the Templar seal appear on this manuscript? I'd love to see that for myself. Can you tell me anything about the Knights Templar? I sure can, Georgie. Soldiers, diplomats, mercenaries, monks, bankers, you name it, the Templars fit the bill. The greatest fighting force in Christendom, the Militia of Christ. Jeez. How did the Templars get their name? From the building in which they set up their headquarters. The King of Jerusalem gave them part of a mosque on the Temple Mount. It was said to have been the site of the original Temple of Solomon. The Order became known first as the Knights of the Temple, and later as the Knights Templar. You're a mine of information, André. Glad to be of help, Georgie. How come the Templars became so wealthy? There was a constant stream of new recruits to their ranks, many from noble families. They were required to swear a sacred oath of poverty, chastity, and obedience. So, their money, goods, and lands were donated to the Order. The Templars soon held land in France, Scotland, England, Spain, most of Europe, in fact. The poor Knights of Christ became the wealthiest power in Christendom. Is it true the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found? Ah, who knows? So little knowledge of what really happened remains. Or if it does, the truth has never been made public. What do you mean by that? The Templars have attained a mythological status, like the King Arthur of the Britons. There are people even now who say the Templars still exist. Do you think that's likely? No, not for a minute. 
The manuscript is being looked after by a friend. In Paris? Yeah. Not far from here, in fact. Well, uh, just give me the address and I'll uh, come around and take a look. I'm not so sure about that. Maybe I should check with her first. A female friend? Yeah, she's a woman. Maybe it was my imagination, but I noticed a predatory look in his eye. Suddenly, this friendly historian had turned into the big bad wolf. This friend who has the manuscript? Are we uh, the anonymous girlfriend? She lives at 361 Rue Jarry. Ah, I know it well. I'll drop by just as soon as I can. I think you ought to know that the tripod is going to be stolen. The uh, Lochman tripod? No. It's true. I can give you a description of the thieves. Before the supposed event has taken place? I heard them planning the raid. They're wasting their time. The tripod is protected by a state-of-the-art alarm system. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Why don't you loan the tripod to me for safekeeping? Because I'd never see it again. Well, don't you trust me? It's not a question of trust, George. That tripod is hundreds of years old and extremely fragile. I get your point. Thanks for your help, Andre. You're welcome. Hi, Andre. Hello, Georgie. What do you make of this? It's the biggest gemstone I've ever seen. Where did you get it? From Professor Pegram's messenger boy. Did uh, Pegram find this on his dig? Yeah, the site where this was found was a Templar castle. Do you think it could be part of the Templar treasure? No, oh, I shouldn't think so. Thanks for your help, Andre. You're welcome.